A. 25 to the power of 3 over 2. What is my index number for this? 2. So we're doing the square root of 25 and then cubing the answer. Square root of 25 is 5. 5 cubed is 125. Uh, let's go to E here. Negative 8 to the 2 thirds. All right. What are we doing? What's my index number? 3. Can you cube root a negative number? Yes, because it's odd. So what's the cube root of negative 8? Negative 2, square it, and you get 4. <clears throat> okay, what is the difference between E and F? They look identical. They're missing what? What are the differences? The brackets. Because there's no brackets, this negative is not included with the exponent. Okay, it's only included when it has brackets, so it actually means that. So the negative just hangs outside. We're doing the cube root of 8 and then squaring our answer. Cube root of 8 is 2, 2 squared is 4. So it's 4 and the negative sign is outside, so the answer is negative 4. And then the last one, G, what do I do when you have two terms being added like this? Do the inside first. So what's 3 squared? 9. 4 squared is 16, which is 25 to the power of a half, which means we're doing square root of 25. Is that okay? All right, we're just gonna do two more and then we're done. So this is like the ones that I had on the pre-quiz thing. This is the next page. Nine over four to the power of three over two. So we're doing a radical. What, what's my index number? Two, so it's the square root of nine over four, all to the power of three. Which we know you can do the square root of nine or the square root of four. What's the square root of nine? So you get three over two cubit. Uh, three cubed is 27, two cubed is eight, so it's 27 over eight. What do you think the answer will be for the second one? It'll be eight over 27, because it's the exact same, except it's got that negative. So your first step is to flip it. And then you do the exact same thing, and we'll do it just to show that it will be the same. Uh, it's going to be the square root of 4 over 9, all cubed, which is 2 over 3, all cubed, which is 8 over 27. Okay. Um... Is that okay? All right. I would like you to do, I gave you question two.
finish two, do three and four, please. Adding the exponents. So x to the m, x to the n becomes x to the m plus n. If it's a power of a power, what do you do with the exponents? You multiply them m times n. If you are dividing the quotient law, you are doing what to the exponents? Subtracting, thank you. Power of a product, that m goes to both uh, terms in the or variables inside the brackets. Same if it's a quotient or a fraction, it's x to the m over y to the m. What does a negative exponent do? I have no idea what this means. What does he do if it's a negative exponent? You flip it. It's 1 over x to the m. And if it's a fractional exponent, you have a radical. What's the index number? The bottom, in this case, n. So it's the nth root of x to the m. I guess I could have that one there. Or the nth root of x to the power of m inside. Okay. So now we're going to put this all to use. So first question, write each as a radical, okay? X to the one sixth, what does that mean as a radical? Sorry? Not X to the power of six fraction, so we have six root of X, oh, okay. So six root of X. Okay, what about B? What's my index number? Four. Does the negative go inside of it? No, because it's not in the bracket. So it's negative fourth root of y to the fifth. Okay. And Kelly has her PDF notes, like saved up because we just didn't put classrooms, so she just did some review. Oh, okay. So notes as well. They're fantastic. Okay. So, uh, Perfect. Don't lose that. That's my whole life. I, I probably have to quit. I know. I'd have to do the same. Yeah. All right. Thanks. All right. C. What's my index number? Three. Does the negative go inside? What about D? Yes. So it's 1 over negative Z to the positive 5 thirds. And then you write it as a radical. E. What has the exponent on it? Just the t, right? Not the 5. So the 5 sits there. The t becomes the fourth root of t cubed. And then f. 5 is inside, so it does have the exponent. So it's all inside the fourth root of 5t all cubed like that. All right, is that okay? Okay, so now we have to combine these. So we have x to the 3 halves times x. What is the exponent if no exponent is written? 1. What do you do if you have the same base and you're multiplying? What do you do with the exponents? 
add them, right? Because it's, uh, it's this rule right here, all right? So how do you add fractions? What do you need? Common denominator. So this has a denominator of 2. How do I write 1 as a denominator of 2? 2 over 2. So then you're adding the exponents. 3 plus 2 is 5. So it's x to the 5 halves. So that's it as an exponent. They want it as a radical as well. So what would the radical be? x to the 5 square rooted. That's even. <clears throat> okay, next one. Y to the 1 third divided by Y to the 5 thirds. If you're dividing, what are you doing with the exponents? Subtracting. They have a common denominator. So you just have to subtract the numerators. What's 1 minus 5? Negative 4 over 3. So it's Y to the negative 4 thirds. All right, we have to rewrite that. What does the negative do? Flips it, so I get 1 over y to the 4 over 3. And then they want us to write it as a radical. So it's 1 over the cube root of y to the 4. All right. Is everybody okay so far? A to the 1 half raised to the power of 2 over 3. What do I do with these two exponents? Multiply them. How do you multiply fractions? Top times top, bottom times bottom. So, A, 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. Always reduce your fractions. What does 2 over 6 become? What is that as a radical? Cube root. <laughs> okay. D. We got a negative exponent. What do you do to get rid of the negative exponent? Flip it. So it becomes y over x squared to the power of a half. Where does that one half go? Yeah, it goes to both of them. So you get y to the one half, x to the one, because you multiply them, right? So a half times two is one. So it's just that. If you're going to write that as a radical, it would just be root y over x. <clears throat> okay, last three. Uh, 4x to the 3 quarters times 3x to the negative 1 half. So deal with the numbers first. 4 times 3. 12. X to the 3 quarters times X to the negative half. What do you do with the exponents? You're adding them, but we need a common. So which one am I going to change? The half. And it's going to become? Yeah. So I'm going to change this to negative 2 over 4. And then you add them. 3 plus negative 2 is 1 x to the one quarter. Well, I guess they want us to write it as an entire radical too. So it's 12x to the one quarter. What does x to the one quarter mean as a radical? Fourth root of x.
And if they want you to put it as an entire radical, how many 12s do I have to put inside? Four of them. So it'll be this. Which gives you, look, I'm not going to ask you to deal with numbers like this. But. That's what it would equal. All right, B. So deal with the numbers. 5 over 25. What does that reduce to? 1 fifth, because 5 goes into 5 once. 5 goes into 25 five times. 1 fifth. We are dividing. So what do we do with the fractions? Or the exponents, sorry. Subtracting. So I'm just going to write it off to the side. So what you're doing is you're going 3 fifths minus negative three-fifths, which actually means you're adding them. They have a common denominator, so what's the exponent? Six-fifths. So you can write it like that, or you can write it as six over x to the six over five over five. Last one, we ready for the last one? No? Eight a to the one half raised to the power of four thirds. So we know that that four thirds goes to the eight and to that. So you'll get eight to the four thirds times a to what power? Don't add them, you multiply them, right? Four over six. <clears throat> So now we got to clean up the 8. That means the cube root of 8 to the power of 4. Reduce the a. 4 over 6 becomes 2 over 3. What's the cube root of 8? 2 raised to the power of 4 is 16. Is that fun? No, I hurt my feelings. All right. Uh, one to three, please. Actually, don't do one, just do two and three. I mean, one is good practice, but two and three, please. <laughs> So we want to simplify these, get rid of the radicals. They want us to write it as a, which is some constant, x to some exponent. So no radicals in our answer. <clears throat> so we're doing the cube root of 8, x to the fifth. So deal with the number separately. What's the cube root of 8? It's 2. If you're not sure about that, you can do your factor tree. And it comes out to 2. Okay. x to the fifth. What is that? At x to the fifth, all cube root. What is that as an exponent? Okay, let's rewrite it. So this is the same as this, right? Correct? Is that the same? Okay, we just did the cube root of eight, we got two. How do I write this as an exponent? x to the 5 over 3. So it's the reverse of what we've been doing. I've been giving you this and saying, what does that mean? Now we are given the radical and we're going backwards. Okay. So B, you can think of it as the fifth root of 32 times the fifth root of x cubed. What's the fifth root of 32? 2. What's x to the, the fifth root of x cubed? As an exponent. 
x to the 3 over 5. Remember, your index number is your denominator in the fraction. So this means the square root of 900 times the square root of x. What's the square root of 900? What do you think it is? 30, right? Because 3 times 3 would be 9, so 30 times 30 would be 900. Oops. So it's going to be 30. And x, square root of x, is what as an exponent? x to the 1 half. OK. On yours, it'll be a lot clearer than mine. We're going to combine these things. But if they're written as radicals, you cannot combine them. So you have to rewrite them as exponents first. So cube root of x to the fifth is actually x to the 5 over 3. Cube root of x is what? x to what exponent? 1 third. We are multiplying, therefore we are adding 5 over 3 plus 1 over 3 is 6 over 3, which is 2. Okay, same thing for this. We want to get rid of the radicals, write them as exponents, because then we can combine. 2 root x is actually 2x to the 1 half times cube root of x, which we just said was x to the 1 third. <clears throat> what do I need to add them? From the denominator. So I'm going to go off to the side here. We're going 1 half plus 1 third. Common denominator is going to be 6. So I multiply this one, top and bottom, by 2. This one, top and bottom, by 3. So I get 3 over 6 plus 2 over 6, which is? So my answer is 2x to the 5 over 6. All right. Okay, three questions on the next page. Here we go. Square roots inside of square roots and cube roots inside of cube roots. All right, so we got to write an equivalent expression using exponents, so no radical signs. So start on the inside. We have a cubed. And if I just look at the first square root, that means it's to the power of a half, right? I'm just looking at this square root here. And then I look at the next square root. What does that mean? So the whole thing again is to the power of one half. What do you do with these exponents? You multiply them. So a half times a half is one over four times three is. Okay, again for the next one. 64v6. Cube rooted means what's the exponent? 1 over 3. All of that is square rooted, which means it's 1 over 2. Now, just do the first two exponents first, these two. Okay, a half times a third is... Sixty-four v six to the one over six, six, I should say. Then this one six gets multiplied to that and to that, so it's sixty-four to the one six times six times the six is one. So just v. But now we got to clean up this sixty-four to the six. Nobody wants to deal with that. Anybody know what the answer is? 64 to the 6? 
So it'll be two because it's actually saying the sixth root. So if you do the factor tree, um, four and two, two and two, four and two, two and two. You're looking for groups of six. There's a group of six. So that's just two. So it's two V. It's an unfulfilling answer, it seems like. Last one. So it's the fourth root of x5, y3, and then to the three halves. So let's deal with the inside bit, this bit here. x5, y3. It's the fourth root. So the exponent is 1 fourth. And all of that is raised to the three halves. Okay, multiply these two together. What do you get? Three over eight, top times top, bottom times bottom. So I get x5, y3 to the three over eight. Then, this exponent goes to both. So x, five, x becomes 5 times 3 is 15 over 8. And the y is 9 over 8. Is that okay? Good enough? That is, yeah, you can't really do anything else than that. Uh, six to seven, please, or for max, six and seven.